So hello everyone and welcome back to the GFG Putin streak of day 156. So if you are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe so that we can learn, maintain and grow our streak together. If you have read this question and you are able to solve this question, then well and good. Otherwise, let us read and see what the question says and we will proceed ahead with the different approaches. So the, the name of the question here for the today's question is frogs and jumps. It's an easy category question, right? So uh, it says that there are n frogs are positioned at one end of the pond. All the frogs wants to reach the other end of the other end as soon as possible. So the pond has some leaves arranged in a straight line. Okay, and each frog can have the strength to jump up to k leaves. And whenever the frog uh, having strength to will visit the leaves of in multiples of two, that is two, four, six, etc., would be crossing the pond. So given the strength of each frog and the number of leaves, you are tasked to find the number of leaves that can be visited. That not be visited by any frog when all the frogs are visited. okay so we have to find the number of leaves that is not visited right let us see how the things are going in the dry run hmm. so they have the leaves as uh, they have the leaves here as let's say four leaves right numbered as one two three and four so the first frog is at position first frog is at position three so it can visit the position three then three plus three six six plus three nine and twelve and so on in the tables of three right so let us this frog has will be able to visit this position so let us mark it as one right then again two comes and two can visit two four six eight and all so let us mark the position two and four also as one and then there will be this thing four but you can already see and four will be able to visit four eight twelve right so again this this is already one so you don't need to mark it so you can see there is one position that is still not visited and you need to return the count of that position so it is a very straightforward question right what we can do here is that we would maintain a visited array right of size leaves plus one because uh, the array started from the zero base indexing right so if we need four leaves four leaves we have to make an array size of five right then we will run a for loop for each and every position of frogs a position of frogs right and for each and every position we will run a while loop let's say for position Till the position is less than equals to leaves, then we will do the operations. We will we will go in multiples of position and we will check that if visited of position is equals equals to zero, then mark it as one, right? Mark it as one, and keep incrementing it. So it will be nothing but position plus equals to. Uh, let's say we have stored the current position in, in temp, so it will be position plus to position plus temp. Something like this. This should be the code. What would be the time complexity of this approach? The first naive approach that we are running a just one for loop and we are maintaining one while loop so it will be and we are the while loop is uh, incrementing uh, in a constant like uh, suppose it was x then it goes to x plus k then it goes to x plus 2k right so these type of increment take the time complexity of log n right so it will be the uh, the worst case would be n log n right so let us code this solution then we'll see that is it really viable or not so let us start coding that approach. Let us make the visited array, and then we'll run a for loop, and then we'll proceed ahead. So that's the simple code there. Since this was a very simple and basic code, the exact thing I explained in the uh, pseudo code which are doing it. So I have not uh, live coded these steps. So first step is that we are making a visited array of least plus one. We are iterating in each and every frog jump. We are storing the position of each and every frog starting position, right? Right, and. Hmm. And what we need to do that we need to run a while loop right uh, and we are storing the we are using another variable time for storing the position because we need to always increment that uh, particular position with its position size right we have to go in the multiple so if it's three then you have to do three plus three so that's the reason we are storing it in another variable the position and we are just checking it that while that's a temp that is our current position if it is less than equals to leaves and check that if it is equals to zero that is if it is not visited mark it as visited and keep on incrementing it at last uh, we have to start from i equals to one because the leaves have been targeted from the one base indexing and we will just see that if it is not visited then count plus plus and return count right let us compile and run and we will see uh, what happens uh, if our logic and expected outputs result the same so it, it gives you the same answer right let us let us discuss about this time complexity once again that is it really log n log n or something else right so let's say let's say for for let's say you have n equals to three right and leaves is equals to four but in the array but in the array and each and every entry let's say you have one right or let's say you just have uh hmm, let's say you have one right 
because that, this could be one possible case right so what will happen is that for each and every one it will it will go to two then it will go to three then it will go to four and then it will stop because leaves is just four similarly it will happen again for the second case it will go to two then three and then four right so you can clearly see that what is happening is that you are running a for loop right which is n times so it will be n and then you are running a while loop l times right so it will be n into l right let us verify the constraint and then we will see we will comment on the time complexity the tle part right okay so you can clearly see that the n and leaves right and frogs of i everything is in the range of uh, 10 power 5 right and my according to this uh, code approach the worst complexity will be n into l so it will be 10 power 5 into 10 power 5 that is 10 power 10 right which is definitely less greater than 10 power 8 so even if our code and approach is right this will definitely give you the tle right let us verify that as well and then we will proceed ahead with the another optimized approach so great that is what we were expecting so now what can we do here is right so let me give you or maybe you pause this video here and try to think uh, there is the most the the most optimized approach to uh, form a prime number right is using the sieve algorithm right pause this video and try to think that if you can apply the sieve algorithm on this problem as well so yes you were right if you're able to apply it now let me explain you that how the things are going right so let us let us uh, let me allow me to give you a test case and then we will so let us and n equals to 3 you have given right and l equals to 10 and in the three entries you have been given the position as 2 4 and 9 right okay so first of all you will make a array of size 10 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yeah make of size 11 right leaves plus 1 so this first what we will do it will mark its multiple as 1 so it will mark this as 1 this as 1 6 and 8 as 1 and 10 as 1 right now when you go for 4 what it will do it will mark this because of because of this number it will go and see that if it is 4 equals to 1 or not and it will the multiples of 4 that is 8 equals to 1 or not right but you can clearly observe that before before uh, uh, blindly running the loop for each and every position right if you, if i would have checked that ki agar is position pe, if it is already 1 then definitely all the multiples would have also been marked 1 because that what have been taken care by the previous number right right or not and that is how the sieve algorithm works in the sieve algorithm if you may remember with the prime numbers that we start from i equals to 2 right and we mark the every multiple of 2 with false right then for i equals to 3 we run and, and we again mark the every multiple of 3 as false so we do not have to check for 4 again right if it is because this has already been marked with the 2 and we will just continue right i hope you were able to relate to the logic as well so in our existing code we just have to check we just have to uh, before running the while loop we just have to check that if our current position right so if our if is if the visited if our current position if it is not visited then only try run uh, then only run for each and every multiples as it is already previously handled right and since you are checking the position then then you need to maintain one more uh, check as well that position should be less than equals to leaves right as it will give you the index out of bound error so that's the only optimization and that's how the c value c algorithm is working in this problem i have showed you the dry run as well so let us optimize the code now so what we have to write here is we just have to include one if statement that the position should be less than equals to leaves right and and visited of position position should be equals to zero that is it should not be visited and if that's the case then only run this entire while loop right now let us hit the submit button let us compile and run and then we will see right so great let us hit the submit button now So great as you can see each and every test case is passed now so that was the only optimization required and what would be the time complexity for this thing is that you are okay so what would be the time complexity the worst will be again the same thing that for let's say an x you are going in the increment of k right 
uh, like uh, in the increment of x itself, right? Right. So let's say x plus k, and then you will do x plus two k, and then x plus three k, right? So whenever you are incrementing in a, a pattern of some integers, then definitely your time comes k is log n. You are running the for loop for n times, so the time comes k overall would be it will be log n, and that's the reason it is getting submitted as well. The space complexity is O of least because using a visited array. So that is it for today's video. Uh, let us meet in the tomorrow's year GPO to streak of day 157. Till then, bye bye. Keep learning and keep growing. And the last thing I need to show you that how this thing, particular thing, will work in C as well. So, this is a very, uh, what to say, a very straightforward code. So, I, I just have to change some things, right? That the, you cannot uh, declare a, a array like this in C, right? So let me just edit that part and that's of the things is as same as we did in Java. So fill it with zero. So that should do the case. Let us compile and run. Everything I guess will be work in C as well. Right? So the compilation is successful. Yes, it is. Now let us hit the submit button and we will verify it for C language as well. So that is it. That is it. Let us meet in the tomorrow's video. Till then, bye bye. Keep learning, keep growing, and bye bye. Take care.